uh, so reactions 37 to 39 are about uh, the heights and the ketones and uh, as usual uh, uh, I've divided uh, the three lectures into uh, different parts uh, so that the size of the file is uh, appropriate uh, so first up is uh, uh, the structure and the physical properties uh, of these aldehydes and the ketones. Uh, so first thing up uh, to remember is uh, both the aldehydes and ketones, uh, you can say, are derivatives of the carbonyl group. And the carbonyl group is a central carbon double bonded with the oxygen. Uh, so if uh, uh, one of these uh, branches is hydrogen, and the other one takes the R group. Uh, so the functional group basically becomes a C double bonded with O and a hydrogen. Uh, this is uh, what we call an aldehyde. And uh, on the other hand, if uh, both the branches are the R group, uh, so C double bonded with O plus the two R groups, uh, this uh, functional group is known as uh, uh, the ketone. So that is the major difference uh, between the aldehyde and the ketones. The central carbon for aldehyde has one hydrogen, one R group. Uh, for the ketone has uh, uh, both the R groups. Uh, so both of these uh, aldehydes and the ketones uh, are uh, uh, polar molecules. Uh, and uh, uh, we discussed the polar compounds or polar molecules uh, in detail earlier. Uh, any uh, compound that has got uh, a more electronegative and electropositive uh, uh, ends is known as the polar uh, compound. Uh, and uh, this uh, carbonyl group is uh, basically polar. Uh, the oxygen that is attached with the central carbon is electronegative to remember and the carbon is uh, electropositive. Uh, so hydrogen bonding in these uh, carbonyls, that is the aldehydes and the ketones, is a little bit interesting uh, due to the fact that these aldehydes and ketones uh, cannot form hydrogen bonds uh, among themselves. So they cannot make intermolecular hydrogen bonds. So aldehydes and ketones cannot join together to make hydrogen bonds. However, water can form hydrogen bonds to both of them. So water can join with the aldehydes as well as the, the ketones uh, with the help of the hydrogen bonds as shown in the uh, diagram with both the aldehydes and ketones. But these aldehydes and ketones uh, uh, amongst themselves cannot make hydrogen bonds. Uh, so here we have the physical properties of these carbonyls uh, and uh, uh, these carbonyls uh, have got uh, a higher boiling point than the hydrocarbons. That is the compounds that have only got uh, hydrogens and carbons in them, like the alkanes and alkenes and alkynes that we discussed, and also higher boiling points than the ethers, whereas they have got low boiling point than the alcohols. Uh, so alcohols, uh, you can say, have got the highest boiling point uh, amongst uh, uh, all of these. Uh, then less than alcohols will be the carbonyls, that is aldehyde and ketones and the lowest will be for the hydrogens and the ethers. Uh, next we have the nomenclature uh, that is naming of these uh, aldehydes and ketones and also uh, some of their common names. Uh, uh, so according to the IUPAC system uh, when we have to name the aldehydes uh, most of the uh, previous uh, general rules of IUPAC systems are, are going to be applied. First we have to locate the parent uh, compound uh, uh, which will be the longest continuous carbon chain and that chain must have the carbonyl group which is the C double bonded with the O and the H. This carbonyl group must be present in the longest chain. Uh, next thing is uh, simply we have to replace the E at the end of the name with an AL and uh, uh, then we have to number the chain and uh, the carbonyl carbon that is the carbon with the double bonded O will be always carbon number one. And if there is uh, any branch or substituent present, we will name them uh, uh, and number them just like we numbered them uh, for the alkanes, alkenes, or alkynes, etc. So uh, three uh, simplest examples are there at the bottom. So if it is uh, just uh, one uh, carbon present, uh, uh, that will be equal to the methane which was in the alkane. So instead of methane, we replace the E with Al, so it becomes methanol. 
Similarly, ethane becomes ethanol and propane becomes propanol in the aldehyde form. And then we have some common names of these as well. Formaldehyde is a, a common name for methanol, acetaldehyde for ethanol, and uh, propionaldehyde for uh, propanol. Uh, so examples are there as usual. So what is uh, the name of this molecule that is present at the bottom? So simply we have to find the longest chain of carbons, but that chain must have the uh, uh, carbonyl group or the aldehyde group present, which is here at the right side. So we'll start numbering from this carbon and go towards the long chain. So total number of carbons are five. Uh, so uh, this is uh, a pentanol because it's an aldehyde. So we replace the E with the AL. And uh, then we have to check if a branch is present. Uh, so we do check and uh, we find out that a branch uh, that is a methyl group is present at carbon number two. Uh, so it's a two methyl pentanol will be the full name of this aldehyde. Uh, here we have some uh, uh, common names and the IUPAC names uh, for uh, the small of the these aldehyde, three of which we already saw. So uh, two more are here in this one. These are the smallest of the aldehydes. Uh, for carbon number one, it's uh, the methanol IUPAC name and the common name formaldehyde. Two carbon ethanol acetaldehyde is the common name propanol and uh, propionaldehyde is the uh, uh, is the common name for this one. Four carbon one is known as butanol and five carbon one is known as pentanol in uh, IUPAC naming system. Whereas butanol is also called butyr, uh, uh, butyrol dehyde in common names and uh, uh, the pentanol or the five carbon one is also called weller aldehyde uh, in the common naming system. Uh, next, we have the IUPAC naming of the ketones, uh, so similar process, uh, but an important difference that is right here at the top, which you must remember, that the simplest or the smallest ketone must have at least three carbon atoms in it, because uh, the central carbon must be attached with two R groups if it is to be called a ketone, so the total number of carbon has to be at least three, then only we will call it a ketone and the carbonyl group has to be in the interior of uh, this long chain or the longest chain. So the base name as usual will be the longest chain that has the uh, keto group which is the C double bonded with the O and uh, then we replace the last E of the name of the alkane with O and E at the end of it and if uh, uh, we have to uh, write uh, then we can write the position of the keto group or the c double bonded o group and uh, the number will uh, has to be the lowest possible number so we'll start numbering from the end that gives us the lowest possible number for this uh, keto group so the smallest of the ketones is the three carbon one known as a prope known and we don't have to write any numbering for it uh, as uh, whether we start from this end or the end, uh, from the right side or the left side, the carbon will always be in the center, which has the double bonded O or the keto group. Uh, this, propo, uh, this propanone has got a very common name, acetone. Uh, four carbon one is known as uh, uh, a butanone, and the common name is uh, methyl ethyl ketone for this one. And the eight carbon one, which has got the uh, uh, the keto group at carbon number four is uh, known as four octanone. So we find out the longest chain. It has got eight carbons. Find out the keto group, which is at carbon number four. So simply call it four octanone. Uh, so the IUPAC naming, uh, as we just saw in the previous slide as well, uh, is uh, almost similar to that of the ketones, uh, directly analogous uh, to the aldehydes. Uh, uh, so we find out the longest chain in this example, which is uh, uh, containing seven carbons, uh, but we must check that it must include the uh, keto group or the C double bonded uh, with the O. Uh, so that chain has got seven carbons in it. We can see so uh, heptane is the L uh, is the alkane, but we have to replace the E with O and E, so it becomes heptanone. And uh, the keto group is at carbon number two, so we call it two heptanone. Once we have named the parent chain or the longest chain, uh, then we simply have to find out if any branch is present. So the branch methyl group is present at carbon four. So it becomes four methyl 
to heptone. Uh, so some of these aldehydes and ketones uh, can be very important and very significant for us and uh, uh, some of them are very useful for us as well. Uh, so a few examples are given of these important aldehydes and ketones. Uh, uh, methanol, which is the smallest of the aldehyde, uh, common name is formaldehyde. It's a gas that is used in aqueous solution. So we mix it uh, uh, with water to make a solution which will be known as formalin. So formalin is the name of the solution which has got methanol in water. And this formalin is uh, very commonly used to preserve tissues. If we take the tissue for the, from the human body, uh, it will uh, basically decay or it will uh, not be uh, for any studying uh, uh, purposes, uh, useful for any studying purposes after some time because uh, the environmental air can sometimes take its part or bacteria can affect that tissue. So in order to preserve it, uh, to retain all its characteristics, we put it in this uh, uh, solution that is known as formalin, which is made from uh, methanol and uh, water. Then we have ethanol, which is uh, the common name is acetaldehyde, and it is produced from the ethanol, which is the common uh, alcohol that uh, uh, is uh, a drank uh, all over the western world uh, and uh, from ethanol uh, when it goes to the liver it is converted into ethanol and that causes the hangover symptoms that are seen in the patients of uh, uh, that take that uh, uh, ethanol and uh, then we have got uh, the propanone or acetone which is the simplest possible ketone it can be mixed with water and it is highly flammable uh, now, both acetone and uh, uh, the one that is a little bit bigger than that, butanone, are very versatile solvents that can be used to dissolve many substances. So as we saw uh, that uh, uh, these uh, carbonyl compounds can be very significant, uh, and here we can see some important uses of these uh, carbonyl compounds. Uh, uh, so these uh, aldehydes and ketones are used in many industries, uh, like the food industry, uh, uh, which uses these uh, uh, carbonyl compounds as natural food additives or artificial additives as well. So basically they add it, uh, these aldehydes and ketones in different types of uh, foods. Uh, uh, fragrance chemicals, uh, the perfumes that you use uh, also have got uh, some carbonyl compounds in it. And they are also used in making uh, medicines and also in the agriculture chemicals uh, that are used to uh, preserve the uh, crops that are grown in the farms. Uh, so here we have a couple of examples of these uh, carbonyl uh, molecules uh, that are uh, uh, commonly used in food industries. Vanillin and uh, two octanone, uh, both uh, very useful in uh, the food industry. Uh, so first up, uh, we have the vanillin, which is used uh, in the vanilla uh, beans. Uh, uh, and is commonly used to add up the vanilla flavor to the edibles uh, like uh, ice creams or uh, certain other uh, edibles uh, that are of uh, uh, vanilla flavor this vanillin can, can be added in them and uh, the other one which is uh, two octanone is used for mushroom flavoring uh, uh, so both are used in the food industry uh, here we have two more examples benzaldehyde uh, which is uh, uh, found in the almonds uh, and uh, uh, the cinnamaldehyde uh, which is uh, commonly found uh, uh, in the cinnamon uh, so again uh, both of these are uh, very useful in the uh, food industry uh, a couple of other of these uh, um, again uh, as uh, aldehydes and the ketone examples the uh, citral uh, which is used uh, in the lemongrass uh, or adding up the lemon flavor and alpha uh, uh, damascon, uh, which is uh, commonly used for the berry of the ring, especially for the uh, blueberries that you can see in the figure as well. So again, uh, these two are also commonly used uh, by the food industry to add up the artificial flavors uh, or uh, sometimes natural flavoring uh, uh, to uh, many edibles. Uh, next we have the reactions involving the aldehydes and ketones uh, and the uh, first up is uh, preparation of the aldehydes and ketones. How do we uh, make these aldehydes and ketones and these reactions we saw uh, during the reactions of alcohols as well. 
Uh, so the main way or the principal means by which we can make these aldehydes uh, is by the oxidation of the corresponding alcohol. If we uh, oxidize a primary alcohol, uh, we will give, get an aldehyde. If we oxidize a secondary alcohol, we will get a ketone. And uh, the tertiary alcohol do not uh, uh, oxidize, so it will not give us any of the uh, two products. Uh, and uh, this oxidation process uh, removes two hydrogens from the alcohol. And all of these reactions we saw in details during the reaction of alcohols. Uh, so examples are here for the aldehyde and ketone formation, which is more or less the repetition. Uh, so when the primary alcohol uh, will oxidize uh, an aldehyde will be formed example is given for the butanol uh, when we oxidize it uh, the product is going to be butanol which is the corresponding uh, aldehyde four carbon alcohol converted into four carbon aldehyde uh, similarly oxidation of the secondary alcohol which is represented by this uh, two with a small uh, uh, knot at the top of it secondary Alcohol oxidation gives us the product a ketone. Uh, just like the aldehydes, uh, uh, the ketone is going to be the correspondent uh, of the alcohol. So six carbon alcohol, two hexanol will always produce a six carbon uh, ketone, which is uh, uh, two hexanone in this scenario. And uh, the oxidizing agent, again, we uh, discussed them during the alcohols, uh, uh, can be KMnO4 or the uh, chromic acid or a very strong uh, uh, acid which is uh, a sulfuric acid sometimes uh, Jones reagent is also uh, used as an oxidizing agent uh, with the tertiary alcohol no oxidation will take place therefore uh, no reaction will occur and obviously we will not have any product so the example shown is a a tertiary uh, alcohol the carbon that is joined with uh, three other carbon atoms that is why it's called the tertiary alcohol it cannot be oxidized uh, therefore no reaction will occur uh, a few more examples are here uh, for producing the aldehydes and the uh, ketones uh, uh, so first up is the cyclopentanol uh, once it is oxidized it will give us the cyclopentanone uh, converted into the a ketone so this one is the uh, secondary uh, alcohol that gives us the uh, cyclopentanone which is the corresponding ketone uh, then we have an example of 5 methyl 1 hexanol which gives us a 5 methyl hexanol again corresponding aldehyde and same is the case uh, with the, these uh, examples at the bottom as well and the alcohol if it is a primary alcohol it gives us uh, uh, the corresponding aldehyde if it's a secondary alcohol it gives us uh, a corresponding uh, ketone uh, 